Hello everyone and welcome to week three of Art and Dance. My name is Katie. I hope you've enjoyed the last few lessons of the Art and Dance sessions. I've really enjoyed making these lessons. And today we're looking at different artists. We've been looking at um, lots of different people in the past and especially Keith Haring. He was an artist from the 1980s and he drew in the subways and he drew lots of bold and exciting, really energetic sort of little illustrations and little shapes and patterns. But today we're going to be looking at Pablo Picasso, who's a very famous Spanish artist. And we are looking at some amazing photographs that he had taken of him, creating some amazing shapes in the space with a light. So it probably sounds a bit funny, but I'm going to show you some pictures and we're going to make our own dances based on this a bit later. So first of all, we're going to warm up to get our heads ready, to get our bodies ready. So let's go. Come with me. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go, go. And when I say go, we have to run on the spot. And when I say stop, you have to stand still. So go and stop. Good. We've done this lots of times, haven't we? When I say sit, we have to sit down. And when I say stand up, you have to stand up. Good. Now I'm going to add in two more this week. So when I say kneel up, you've got to kneel up. And when I say lie down, you've got to lie down. Good. So we are going to be all over the place today. So we have go and stop and sit and stand and kneel up and lie down. Good. And then of course we have the ones that we did last week and the week before which were fidget. So you can't keep still, you're moving as fast as you can. And then we have freeze as well, where we freeze in an interesting position. Good. So ready, here we go. Fast as you can, legs going really fast. Good, and stop, and sit down, and stand up, and lie down, and kneel up, and lie down, and kneel up, and sit down, and stand up, and go, and freeze. Have a breather. Well done. A freeze in another position. Anything you like. Good. And stand still. Great. Well done. Catch your breath. Right. This time we're going to do opposites. So let's run through what those will be. So if I say go, you're going to stop. If I say sit, you're going to stand. And if I say stand, you're going to sit. If I say kneel up, you're going to lie down. And if I say lie down, you're going to kneel up. Exactly. And if I say fidget, you're going to freeze. And if I say freeze, you're going to fidget. Okay, so the opposite of what I say. Right, thinking caps on. So let's go. And go. Very good, and stop, and stand up, and sit down, and lie down, and kneel up, and fidget, and freeze, and sit down, and go, and uh, kneel up and lie down and sit down and stand up and sit down and stand up and lie down and sit down. Well done, excellent. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that one. That's good to get everything going, isn't it? Brilliant. So. The next thing we're going to do is, I want you to imagine that you've got lots of coloured paint on your hand. 
You can dip it in a paint pot and it can be whatever colour you like. Okay, have that in your head. And what I want you to do with your painty, painty hand is you're going to write your name. Okay, we're going to go very, very high to very, very low. So we're going to go, my name's Katie, so I spelt with a K, an A, nice roundy A, T, with a cross, I, with a dot, and an E. Katie with an E, good. So write your name with your hand. The next thing I want you to do is dip your paint, dip your elbow into the paint and write your name with your elbow. So we can do lots of stretching as we write our names. So I'm going to change colour this time. Yep, I think the first one was green and I think this one is orange. So I'm going to go really big as you can. It feels different, doesn't it, with a different body part. Uh, T, I, okay. So what's your name? Some people have got really long names, so it might take a bit longer. Some people have got really short names, so maybe you could write your name two or three times. Good. Can you now take your knee? Okay, dip your knee in the paint. Oh, we're going to have to balance with this one. I'm going to go for a pink this time. Okay. Now, try and write your name with your knee. Be careful not to knock anything over. If you're with someone else, maybe you could hold their hand. Good, and now finally, woo, that's a hard one on the knee, isn't it? Good, okay. If I'm going too fast, you can pause me, because your name might be longer. Okay, if not, you want to carry on. Get another body part, whatever you want it to be. It could be your head. It could be your tummy, it could be your toe, okay, it could be the back of your leg, whatever you want, and you can write your name in it. So I'm going to go for my shoulder, I think. I have a blue shoulder. So in the paint, there we go. This feels different again. Round the A. Good. <laughs> my eye. And my E. Good. Very nice. So we've kind of warmed up there. Let's give our arms a shake. And let's give our legs a shake. Good. Right. Can we just reach up really high, feet in parallel? Good. And just stretch to the side. Breathing in and breathing out. Stretch to the other side. Good. Relax the arms. Good, so I want to show you a few pictures. And this is Mr. Pablo Picasso. Okay, so Pablo Picasso was a Spanish artist, but he actually spent a lot of his time in France, and especially Paris. He really loved Paris, where he got lots of his ideas and lots of inspiration. So, about 71 years ago, in 1949, a lighting innovator and photographer called Jean Mealy, who was Albanian, visited Picasso in his studio. And Mealy was a brilliant photographer who'd taken lots of photos and experimented with lots of things like light and things like that. And he thought that they could do some brilliant work together. And he was right. Because, if we look at some more pictures... What they decided to do was Picasso, as you can see from the first one actually, he had a very small light that he was holding. And what he'd do is he would draw pictures in the air and in the space, and then Mealy would take these pictures and capture that moment where that movement and that shape was captured in the space. Can you see that? So Picasso was drawing, and instead of having a piece of, um, paper with paint or ink or charcoal on the paper that we keep forever, these actual, this light was va then vanished as soon as it was drawn. But because Mealy took these pictures, they were captured and we could have them forever. So they're really beautiful pictures. So Picasso, with his small electric light, he drew centaurs, which are sort of mythical Greek creature. He drew bulls. He drew, he drew Greek profiles like this one. So it's that kind of a profile is when someone turns sideways. So it's the sideways profile of somebody. 
And he also drew his signature. So you can see just some lovely swirls, some lovely spirals. There we go. And he's, he called these his light drawings. So we'll go back through them as well. So they were taken in a dark room and there were two cameras, one at the side and one at the front. And the shutters of the camera were left open. And then this captured the light and took the photo. And then when the light faded in real life, we were left with these amazing pictures. So after seeing these pictures, I thought these are amazing. What we've got to do, we have to try these in our dance lesson. So that's exactly what we're gonna to do today. So we've already started by writing our name with our um, different body parts. So I thought we're gonna carry that on with Picasso's images in mind. So coming back into the space, I want you to imagine now you're holding a light, a bit like Picasso has, so very strong, very uh, small electric light. Okay, and it's attached to a lead, but I want you to imagine that. And what we're going to do is try different levels. So, you can write your name, or if you want to write a different word, like hello, something different, you can. But I want you to try different levels. So we're going to start off really, really high. I've got quite a low ceiling here, so if you can go even higher on your tiptoes, that would be amazing. So I'm going to write my name. It's going to be quite small, but I'm going to write it really, really high up. Good. I'm then going to write it sort of middle level, a bit like a signature, a bit like Picasso. Good. And then I'm going to write it very, very low on the floor, almost like it's on the floor. There. And can you see it? Can you almost imagine like a sparkler when you have a sparkler and you light it? You know, it leaves a trace of light, doesn't it? You can almost imagine that. So we've got our levels, high, middle and low. Now we're gonna try different speeds. So imagine that the faster that we draw, the quicker that we can write, and that we can see our light before it fades out in front of us. So I want you to write your name as fast as you can. So, go. Good, how was that? Now let's try it very slowly. Can you imagine now, because it's slower, I feel like I want to go bigger, but I'm not sure why. I think that could look quite nice. Here we go. Now in dance, when we use the space, we don't just use the space here. Like some artists, when they're painting, often have a piece of paper or canvas, and they're painting what's just in front of them. But in dance, we use all the spaces. So we can use this space, we can use our side space, we use the space behind us, we use the space above us, and we use the space below us. And with our light, drawing our name, we can write on all of these spaces wherever we want to. So that's what we're gonna do. So the next thing I want you to do, can you get a piece of paper and a pen, okay? You might have to pause me if you want to go off and get one. Okay, or a pencil, whatever you've got to hand. It doesn't have to be big either. Okay, and when you've got that, can you draw a very small little grid? So you've got three boxes here. Okay, and in the first box, I want you to write your name. So my name's Katie. In the second box, I want you to write any number, and this number doesn't have to mean anything. I just chose these three numbers because I like the curvy eight. I like the three because the top bit's a bit smaller than the bottom bit. And I like the four because it's got quite straight lines, so that's a bit different to these two. And then the bottom one, a bit like the Keith Haring shapes that we did, can you just draw a very, very simple shape, anything you like, I've gone for the curvy shape. It can be straight, it can be curvy, it can be both, it can be spiky, it can be whatever you like. So you've got three different areas of shapes and lines that we're gonna use for our dance. Okay, so you can pause that, pause me, while you have a little draw and a little write of that. And what you're gonna do is have this in front of you, and that's what we're gonna create our little dance phrase on. So have that in front of you to remind you Okay, by the way, if the three numbers is too much, you can have one number, or you can have just two numbers, or you can have three, or if you want, you can have more, but that's completely up to you, okay? Okay, so let's go back into the space, and what 
we're going to do is practice this. We're going to add all these together. So first of all, we're going to write our name, like we've done quite a lot. So let's do our name again. Imagine you're holding this little light. Okay, good. And next, we're going to add our number. So I've got an eight, Whoa, which is quite a big wibbly wobbly eight. And I've got a three, so I'm going to stop and stop. And I've got a four, so I'm going to go down, across, and down. So I like that one with the straight lines. And then my last one was my sort of wibbly blobby shape. So I'm going to go, it's like a sort of puddle. So I'm going to draw that in the space like that. So I've got my name, number, and sort of funny blobby shape here. So pause me for a minute, have a little practice of that. Okay, you can make it as big as you like. Okay, you may have a really big name. Okay, you might have a teeny tiny number. Very, very small in the space, up to you. And you might have a sort of medium sized shape. Okay, think about the space that we talked about. So, I might start with my name here, quite big. I'm gonna go round the corner and write my number here. Okay, so I'm actually turn my back to you because I want my number to go round the corner. And then I'm gonna go up and imagine I'm drawing on the ceiling and I'm gonna do my blobby shape on the ceiling, which I quite like. The other thing I want to do is I'm gonna swap hands with my Picasso light. So I've got my hand, I've got my one hand, I'm right-handed, but I think I quite like swapping over. And I might even use two hands sometimes as well, especially on something like the number eight. I might use two hands. And for some reason I imagine if I use two hands, I might press harder or the light might become brighter. So maybe my eight will be a really bright, big number. So have a play around with that. And this is your name, your number, your shape. So if we were all together, everyone's would look really different and that's brilliant. And also they're different because in your imagination, you're the only one who can see this in space. So have a think about color again. You might have just the white light that Picasso had. You might change color, so your name might be one color. Your number might be another color and your shape might be another color. Okay, so it's completely up to you. So have a minute to practice, so you can pause me. And the next thing we're gonna do, this is one of my favorite things to do in dance, we're gonna add music to the movement. But what I've done this week is I've chosen three pieces of music, and they're all very, very different. And we're gonna play, I'm gonna play each one, but we're gonna do our same dance phrase. And I want you to think, <laughs> if I was with you, you could tell me, I want you to think about how that makes you feel and if you dance differently to a different piece of music. And this is really interesting because often when you watch other, other people's dances, you watch it with one piece of music and you think, oh yes, that's what it's about. And then you watch it with exactly the same dance but with a different piece of music and you think, oh, I can see something completely different because that music has made me think of something else or maybe they're dancing it differently because the music's making them feel slightly different. So a really good thing to do is play around with dance and music. They work really, really well together. So I've chosen these three tracks, okay? And we're gonna try doing our dance phrase. So this dance phrase that we've done, your name, number, shape, but we're gonna try that with these three pieces of music. my number one piece of music okay I won't say anything about it now this is our number two piece of music so try your phrase okay with this piece of music here we go
that was a little bit different, wasn't it, that one? Okay, and the last one, my final piece of music, here we go. So what did you think? So they're quite different, aren't they? So for me, the first one is sort of French Paris music. That reminded me of something quite relaxed. So my letters are quite big. I thought it was quite upbeat. It was quite relaxing, but quite exciting at the same time. So my letters were quite big. My numbers were biggish. They were mixed up, but I was just kind of enjoying the whole thing, maybe telling a story through my movement there. Depends what you thought when you watched mine. Okay, the next one was very energetic. I really like that one. I made, my dancing became much faster. I thought maybe my writing became a little bit smaller as well because I was going faster. So it's quite hard to do things really big and really fast. And the last one, I really felt like I was sort of going through space, something like that. So I felt a bit floaty and a bit dreamy. And I think my, Letters felt like they were got bigger, my numbers got bigger, and I wasn't rushing as much. So everything changed quite a lot because of those. So how did you find the music? Which one did you prefer? Which one didn't you like? Which thought maybe one worked better with your movement than others? So what we're gonna do is do them again to give you a chance to listen to the music again. And then you can keep winding it back and you can keep playing the music and having a practice. So let's go through those three different musics, three pieces of music again. Try number two, a slightly faster one. last one. So what you can do, 
because I realise those pieces of music are very, very short, is keep winding it back and then you can have a practice and have a play. I wish I could see these, I bet they're absolutely fantastic. But you, what you can do is then take your grid and you can try different things. So you could write a word like hello or biscuits or whatever you like. You could try maybe a slightly longer word and that makes your dance phrase a little bit longer. You could try different numbers. You could add a few more numbers on. Think of numbers that might look different in the space. So I've got an eight, which is the curvy one, and a four, which is a very straight one. So how about a five? Because that's straight and curved, isn't it? With a little hat on top. And then the shapes. I've got a very curved shape, but maybe you could try something a bit more spiky, something a bit different. And you can add more lines. So it could be a really, really long dance. And try different pieces of music. Maybe you could try different things, try it without music. How does that feel? Does it feel very different to having music there? So I hope you've enjoyed this session. We're gonna carry this on next week as well because there's so much we can do with Picasso's amazing work. But let's have a little cool down right now. So come back into the space again. Okay, and I think we're gonna have some music to cool down as well. I found another track that's really lovely. Okay, and we're just going to do some gentle stretches. So you want to go to your knees and just reach your arms up. And very gently just hang over to the side. Okay, can you try to look down? Good, reach up and change your arms all the way over to the other side. Thank you so much for dancing with me today and I will see you next week for more Picasso. Thank you.